Hi, and welcome to this instructional video on quadratic functions. And more specifically, we're going to talk today about how to find the vertex, the roots, and the y-intercept of a parabola. And it sounds like a lot to cover, but uh, hopefully we try to cover those three aspects uh, with an example. And the example is, if we have a parabola, and a very simple one, y is equal to x squared plus 3x, for example. What we're going to try to do is to find three things. We want to find the, the, the roots, the vertex, and the y-intercept. Let's start by finding the roots. And the roots are essentially where the parabola intersects the x-axis. So if we were to draw, if we were to draw a very simple parabola here, and we had a parabola like this. Oops. Let's change. We had a parabola like this. The roots of that parabola would be these two points right here. The place where the parabola intersects the x-axis, where this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis. Let's move down a bit. So, here we go. To find the roots, what we're going to do is we're going to set y equal to zero. Because whenever we have our graph crossing the x-axis, the y value is always equal to zero. So when we set y equal to zero, our quadratic function becomes zero is equal to x squared plus 3x. And what it really boils down to is solving this equation for x. And what we notice right away is that we can factor the right-hand side. We can factor an x out of both of these terms, and we pull out an x from the first term and the second term, and we're left with this. And uh, very simply, in order to get a zero, our either x can be zero, or you know basically this part can be zero. If, if our x is zero, and we multiply that zero by this number here, we're going to get a zero. If we set this term equal to zero, then we're going to get a zero as well. And so we're going to have to solve for x plus 3 is equal to zero. And we're going to bring the 3 over to the other side, and which means that we're going to have x is equal to negative 3. So essentially, you've got two roots to our quadratic function or our parabola. Let's move down a bit. And this really allows us to quickly draw our parabola. So let's, let's go ahead and, and draw the parabola. There we go. And actually, I don't think uh, that's going to work. We're going to have to, we're going to have to remove. Let's remove both of those. We're going to have to draw something like this because we have a negative root here. So if we call this negative three, oops, again, and you can see I'm not very adept at using this this drawing tool yet, but as well we get these tutorials going, I'll get better with each one. So that's negative three, that's zero, and our parabola is gonna look something like this. So forgive me for my bad drawing here, but really this should be passing through negative three there. So that's really what our gonna parabola is going to look like and how do I know that it opens upwards? Well you can tell that it opens upwards just by inspecting the sign of the number in front of our x squared term. In this particular case, we have a positive one, and which means that if it's positive, then our, our parabola is going to be opening upwards. And so our vertex, right away, we can, we can see visually that our vertex is going to be somewhere here. So our vertex is going to have a negative x coordinate and a negative y coordinate. But the big question is, how are we going to go about finding the vertex? Well, there's actually... There's actually a couple ways we could do it, and that's one of the uh, 
the beauties of mathematics is there's not always one single way to solve a problem. There's, there's usually multiple ways. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try try a couple of ways to find the vertex of this parabola and uh, hopefully we'll come up with the same answer. So let's rewrite our parabola x squared plus 3x. And, uh, and, and, and by the drawing that we had, the drawing that we had up here, the vertex, you can tell, you can look, is actually going to be halfway in between negative 3 and 0, the x-coordinate of the vertex. And so uh, right off the bat, very simply, without doing any more sort of algebraic manipulation, if our x-coordinates of our roots are negative 3 and 0, you've got two roots, then the x-coordinate the x coordinate of our vertex is going to be negative 3 over 2, which is the halfway point between between negative 3 and 0. If we have a number line here, the halfway point here is going to be negative 3 over 2. And then correspondingly, since we now know the x coordinate of our vertex, we can plug that back in to get our y coordinate. So we plug x is equal to negative 3 over 2 back in for x. We square that plus 3 times negative 3 over 2. Wherever I see an x, I'm going to put negative 3 over 2. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Negative 3 squared. We take a negative number and square it. It's going to be positive. 9. 2 squared is 4. Negative 3 times 3 is just minus 9 all over 2, which simplifies to we got a common denominator of 4. So we're going to multiply the top by 2 here and the bottom. So we're going to 9 minus 18, which is negative 9 all over 4. And so, so the vertex, our vertex, is going to be negative 3 over 2, negative 9 over 4. And so if we scroll back up to our parabola here that we drew before, the coordinates, the coordinates of our vertex is going to be negative 3 over 2 and negative 9 over 4. And let me just write this a little more neatly. Make that a three. And there we go. So we, we figured out the the first thing we figured out were was the the roots of this parabola. And so we found uh, we found two roots of our parabola right there, x equal to zero, x equal to negative three. And then we proceeded to find the vertex just by using the property of symmetry of our parabola, the vertex is always going to be the halfway point between the two roots. And then lastly, what we need to figure out is the, the y-intercept. And the y-intercept, at the y-intercept, x is always going to be zero, right? But if we go back to, if we go back to our parabola here, our y-intercept is where the the graph is going to intercept the y-axis and in this particular case it intercepts it right, right here and at the y-intercept our x is always going to be zero so what we do to find the y-intercept is we we substitute or put in x equal to zero into our quadratic function and our quadratic function is let's rewrite it again x squared plus 3x and we're going to substitute x equal to zero in there so we're going to go 0 squared plus 3 times 0, which is just 0. So therefore, our y-intercept is going to be 0, 0. So actually, our y-intercept is right going, going to be right at the origin. That's our y-intercept. And... That's our lesson for today. Thank you and see you next time.